Good morning, everyone. This is Reverend Janet Mohammed, pastor of the Journey Within in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Welcome to everyone. Usually, if you get together with this crew, we just have a few left before the service. Um, I'm joining you from Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, here at the Journey Within virtually. Uh, that will continue for as long as we know we're right now. Joining me today, uh, it's my great honor to have our two guests with us. Um, David Scherzer, certificate, certificate holder of the Spiritualist National Union. He's a tutor, um, future tutor at prestigious Arthur Finley College. Um, he really loves healing, I have to say. He, he loves to teach and work with um, uh, the Ministry of Healing and teaches, demonstrates internationally around the world uh, mediumship and the advancement of the religion of spiritualism. So we invite David to our platform today. Thank you very and much. Joining us as well. And I'll just say these are both dear friends of ours. We really love these two. So um, I'll give you all the credentials, but they're just really nice guys. Um, so uh, as well, joining me is Minister Colin Bates, Minister of the Spiritualist National Union as well, certificate holder. Um, he's been coming to the United States for probably 25 years. I think 25 years. Um, yeah. So, um, and uh, tutor at the Arthur Finley College as well, uh, travels the world uh, teaching, demonstrating, and as an exponent of the religion of spiritualism as well. So we welcome both of our guests today. We're always, always grateful to have you all here. We're glad all of you have come to join us this Easter morning, if you celebrate that or whatever your tradition is. Um, have a blessed day, whatever it is. Um, so uh, we start our services with spiritual healing. Spiritual healing is a laying on of hands in prayer. Um, it's not to be used in place of medical attention, but in addition to. Um, if there's anyone whose names you would like to request prayers for, please put that in the chat box. First name, last initial, uh, no last names because of confidentiality. Um, our uh, absentee healers will be sending them healing for the days, weeks, and months to come. Um, and we go into a quiet piece of meditative music. During that time, if you'd like to participate, if you just go into the quiet meditation and focus on as well your own spiritual healing, uh, just with your breath, focusing on your immune system, strengthening, enhancing it um, as well. Our absentee healers are here with us. We're grateful to them as always and they'll be sending healing out to us. So I'll just be putting on a piece of music in a moment and first I'll open with prayer. As we gather in community this morning, dear God, we ask for a ministry of healing angels to draw near to this group of people assembled, this group of souls come together in community. We pray for each of you here present. We pray for your homes, for their well-being, their health, and for healing where it is necessary. We pray for all of those who are struggling this morning, whether it be emotionally, physically, mentally, or spiritually. And particularly, dear God, for those who in any way are in distress, whether it be an addiction, mental illness, through deep grieving because of a loss of recent times. We pray for healing as well, dear God, for our planet, for this beautiful, beautiful planet. And we bring all of our prayers and lay them at the footstool of the great spirit, which we know to be love. Amen. As we can come to the end of our healing minutes, <coughs> excuse me, we continue to send absentee healing to all those in need and though all of those who have requested our prayers. Amen. Welcome back everyone. Uh, welcome to everyone joining us, 157 of us at the minute in community. Glad to be with you all this morning. Um, and I would invite one of our guests to open with prayer. As we just take a, a small moment to just embrace the presence that we have created together, to open our hearts and our minds in prayer to build that bridge of light that connects all of us throughout all of the world together. Gracious and eternal Mother, Father God, in whom we move and have our very being, may thy light shine within the hearts of all of mankind 
as we move into the presence of prayer, may it travel forth upon the wings of love to touch all those in need, not only within our world, but indeed the worlds beyond. As we embrace thy presence, for within the heart of love and God, we will find the spirit world. And as we embrace the presence of the spirit this day, may we know within our hearts that we are loved and cherished and that all those that have gone before us remain less than a breath away to each and every one of us and that the reunion of life is like love and love like life is indeed eternal. And as we come before thy presence, as we embrace the eternal knowledge within ourselves, may we be uplifted, may we be strengthened, may we have courage within our lives to share your love throughout all those that we meet and the lands beyond in the absolute knowledge that the power of love is universal, for indeed it is beyond colour, creed, or distinctions of life for it is the power of all of creation that links all of us together through that divine spark of eternity. May today be one of love and light. May that love carry us forward within strength and above all within hope of the absolute knowledge that we are indeed loved and in knowing that we are loved, may we become love. And may that desire to understand life itself be shared amongst all those that we know that the desire and the knowledge may travel forth within love, within compassion, within understanding and being there for the needs of each other. We leave this service as always in the joy of your presence now and always. Amen. Amen. We now move into a piece of music as Leona Lewis, Footprints in the Sand. I'd like to now welcome one of our guests to share the address for today. Uh, thank you very much. That'll be me today. Okay. Uh, at the moment, I don't really know where I'm going because I believe strongly that the time of the address is the time where spirit can give us inspiration to where we need to go within our minds to maybe also a bit reflect upon our lives and, 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 and look at life a bit in, in different angles. But what is really interesting, and I love the Easter service, because when we look at Eastern, Eastern is a Christian holiday where we actually celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's actually interesting that a lot of people are celebrating now the survival of death and when we bring that back into our religion spiritualism what are we doing every sunday here in this church we're actually celebrating eastern every single sunday because we are celebrating that life exceeds what we call death, that our souls and spirit live on. And isn't that a really nice thought that exactly today, even people who don't actually believe in life after death are looking for eggs, are looking for their hidden chocolates in remembrance, actually, traditionally, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we go even further back, when we go look at the pagans here, they had the goddess of rebirth, Esotera, also Esotera, sorry for that mishap, my pronunciation, learning every day something new which is the goddess of rebirth. And now spring is in full bloom. The trees are becoming alive here in the UK. 
the daffodils are out, the tulips are coming, the birds have prepared their nests and laid their eggs. It's a new dawn, a transformation from a time of gray heavens. For you in America, a lot of snow, I think you had terrible, terrible masses of snow kept you inside, kept you shuffling, kept you doing what you wanted to do. But now all of a sudden the sunshine comes out and kisses the earth with new life, a new dawn. And isn't that for us human beings as well, where we now come out of that time of being a bit more calm, being a bit more introvert, being more kept within our houses. But now all of a sudden the warmth hits the earth and we are outside enjoying the nature. So that's like life. For us, it's a new dawn, it's a new spring. We can rewrite history if we want to. We can rewrite our story of life. But then brought into the concept of spiritualism, where that rewriting not only happens within this physical world, but it also happens after what we call death. Because what is so in interesting here is, it is our soul that seeks the expression. It is our soul that seeks new knowledge, new point of views, angles. And not just here on the earth plane, but also beyond. And this is often seen within communication when people come back to us and say, do you know what? I know what I did wrong. I know what I would have done differently. And when Janet introduced me, she said, I'm a great believer in healing. And I am, because that's the message of communicating mediumship. It is showing us that we can evolve beyond our physical existence. Our journey doesn't just stop because we're not here anymore. When we take that time that we call the transition, when we move from one conscious state into another. Within the world of spirit, it is being born. It is a rebirth of ourselves. It is when we leave our physical existence behind, which doesn't mean memories, which doesn't mean experiences, which doesn't mean leaving behind the one that we love. All that conscious knowledge we are taking with us, but what we are liberating ourselves are the confinements of our physical body. So there you can see that sometimes when someone passes, it can be a liberation. For those here on the earth plane, left behind, there is sorrow, there is grief. There are tears. But for the ones moving from one state into the other, it's like being reborn, being met by those that they love. Because I'm also a great believer that God will never, ever leave anybody behind. What kind of God would that be if someone would just be left behind? So therefore, when we take that journey into a far greater existence, when we also lose confinement of our own morals and ethics, when we liberate ourselves from judgment, then our soul progresses even more because all of a sudden the world that we live in becomes a much 
bigger place with such a variety where we become even more individual, but through individuality, we become more one that we ever have been. Because in allowing us to really dwell within the variety that exists within our existence, not only understanding grows, but also empathy and the understanding of other opinions. And through that, we become much more one than we ever thought we could be. And isn't this what is happening in the world right now? where many different opinions clash with each other. And there are truths in all the different opinions. But aren't we asked now to also maybe move from one position into the other, to try and understand where other people come from. And if each and every one did that, the saying, I am right, would cease to exist. Because in everything that we know, everybody is right and everybody is wrong. How many times has history been rewritten? How many times have people fought against things that were thought to be true. And then all of a sudden, a hundred years later, you would smile about what people thought. What potions and lotions they took. And nowadays we would think, why would they wanna poison themselves? But because they didn't know better and we do, but we are still on this great journey of endeavor, great journey of learning. We have the opportunity today to learn every day something new. We have today the opportunity to reconstruct of what we believe is true. What you have thought today doesn't mean that you think tomorrow and you have every right for that to happen, because your soul seeks the expression of learning and growth. It's a preparation for when you take your transition, for when you start to becoming reborn again into a far greater, magnificent world that we call the spirit, that you are able to exceed everything that you thought possible because limitations are just gone. But why wait till we are reborn into the world of spirit? Why not starting right now in this very moment where we look at ourselves, where we maybe ponder back in our lives, observe, who was I? Who am I now? And who do I really want to be? Today is the day to rewrite your story. It is a new page within your book, within your legacy, that you will be remembered of. You might be mourned as well by your loved ones. But if you can tell them that when we go, when we move into that other world that we call the world of spirit, that you will always be there for those left behind. As the song said, I promise I'll always be there. And there is the message of healing that communicating mediumship carries within it. I'll always be there for you, 
when you need me. Healing, the very essence of what we celebrate. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you for those beautiful words. <clears throat> if we were here in the church in person, we would be coming to our point of announcements and collection. Uh, Karen has devised this little box. You can take a picture of it with your phone and it takes you directly to a donation system. Um, if you're so moved, we would greatly appreciate it. Or you, if you want, you could send in something. Everything's appreciated, great and small. Um, there is service this afternoon. This evening at 630, it's our student service that has become quite popular. It's really quite excellent, I have to say as well. So um, sometimes, particularly as we head into the summer, you know, maybe a later service is good for you um, or come to both. There's different people, um, some of our uh, ministers in training, um, quite, a, quite a large group of different people that are participating. It's wonderful, um, I have to say. Um, almost every night of the week, there are uh, classes. Monday night, there's Journey to the Soul with Reverend Anna. There's an advanced mediumship class. Um, Tuesday nights, there's a beginners and, and separate inter beginners intermediate class for mediumship. There's also our healing circle. Wednesday nights is our healing service um, at 7.30. Thursday night is beginners mediumship class. Um, I'm sorry, beginners psychic development. On Wednesday at 2.30 in the afternoon, we have overseas students that have requested a practice class. That's at 2.30 and um, beginning next Sunday at one o'clock with Reverend Dawn um, and myself, there will be a, a, a class to practice um, intermediate and intermediate psychic development and mediumship. Um, so please join us for that as well. Uh, every weekend there's tons of classes happening. If you check under the events page, um, uh, at the Journey Within website that will show you what's coming up. This Wednesday is um, the Power of Prayer with Minister Judah Seaman. That's a two-part class, so that's this Wednesday. On the 9th and the 10th, there is a beginner's mediumship class with Paul Jacobs. On the 10th, there is mediumship and spiritual development with British medium Leonard Tatt. On the 10th, there, next Saturday night, there's a demonstration with myself, Ellen Chandler, Dawn, and Bobby. That's for the schoolhouse. Um, David Shearzer will be with us on the 10th and 11th. There is healing within mediumship. Um, so please, you can still sign up for that as well. Um, there are lots of different classes coming up um, as well. Colin has one, a two day class um, coming up later in the month. All of this is listed on the Journey Within website. Um, there's a fundraiser on April 16th with Mavis Patilla and myself. Um, that's for the schoolhouse fundraiser as well. And pretty soon, I have to say, um, just for the churches, if you're a member of the church, you know our parking lot here is a mud lot. Um, so uh, pretty soon I have to start fundraising uh, to have the parking lot paved. It's going to be more than paving because um, as I went over to the town, they're, they've got an environmentalist involved. So we know that they're gonna want draining. They know we're gonna want lighting. So it's gonna be a, a big thing, but if we don't start, we'll never get it done. So we'll just forge ahead. So uh, watch for details on that as well. Um, something necessary and something um, we're doing. As well as we're speaking, the church uh, kitchen is going through transformation. Finally, the floor has been laid. The equipment arrived. We <laughs> should have been paying attention. Stove arrived. The man took it off the truck and it's 450 pounds. So how do you get that in the church? So it's been interesting, I have to say. We miss all of your presence here in person. Um, in a moment, we're going to move into our demonstration of mediumship. If you've been here, you know we have a beautiful all face wall and a tree memorial. So um, today, particularly if there's someone in the spirit world that you're missing, imagine yourself in the journey within lighting a candle under the memorial tree for your loved ones you may be missing today. Um, we'd like to thank all of our volunteers. Um, so many people put together what we've been able to accomplish on Zoom. There's a student demonstration of mediumship, not this Monday, but next Monday. Um, last time we had 200 people at that, so that was wonderful. These are advanced mediumship students, um, so please turn up for that. We'd appreciate it. Um, if you'd like to drop off any food, please don't bring glass or perishable. 
Um, this will get moved down to Kumac. I'm getting ready to do a run to Patterson myself, uh, Ed's way in uh, Florida for a little bit of time, which I hope he's really enjoying. So, um, but thank you to everyone, Reverend Karen, Reverend Patty. If there's anyone during the course of the week you'd like to request healing for, please call the church office email. If you're having a tough time and would like to speak with one of our ministers, Coping sometimes is difficult during the pandemic. Please reach out as well. Anything we can do to help you. I think there's nothing I've forgotten, but someone will put in the chat box if there is something I forgot. Um, so in a moment, we'll be moving into our demonstration of mediumship. We have a piece of music first. Um, and then um, if the medium brings a body of evidence that you feel belongs to you, which means you can take 90 to 100% of what's said, Please raise your little yellow hand. Can a few people raise your little yellow hands to show us how that works? Thank you, that was very quick. Um, if you can take the first three pieces and not the next three pieces, then lower your little uh, yellow hand so we can find our recipients as quickly as we can. Um, and if all else fails, please type to me in the chat box in case we go to unmute you and it's not working. So um, we navigate the Zoom world the best we can and we're deeply appreciative. No news on the church opening. We won't be opening until it's 100% um, at least. So no news on that happening anytime soon. But at least we have this way to come together in community. So I'll be uh, just be putting on a piece of music called Child of Light before we move into the demonstration of mediumship. Just before we go into the demonstration, we always have our message prayer. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I'm a thousand winds that blow. I'm the diamond glints on snow. I'm the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I'm the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circle flight. I'm the soft star that shines at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. I'd like to turn the demonstration over to our guest. Hi everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. As I was just sitting listening to that wonderful music, my first communication is with a gentleman and what he makes me aware of within the sense of his presence is that I know that he was a father, I know that he was a grandfather and I know that he held office in some way and I want to talk about local office and a very well respected man and all he just kept saying to me as I became aware of him was, do you know they wouldn't let me retire? They wouldn't let me retire. So I know that he continued serving after the normal retirement date. He passes in quite older age. I do feel that uh, very much with him. But I want to be somewhere where there is this wonderful sense of community, this wonderful sense of community. And so not the big city, I feel as if I want to be outside, I want to be much more rural where he is concerned. There's definitely a connection to the name of Rob or Robert seemed to come or Bob seemed to come around him uh, as I first became aware of him. I know that he lost weight definitely before he passed, but he was very proud of his service because he called it service. So I know this is really quite unusual to actually stay in office past the retirement age. Who can understand this? Who can understand this where somebody would have continued to serve past their normal retirement age? He just kept saying, they wouldn't let me go. They wouldn't let me go. And then he started laughing. Tiffany, can you understand some or all of this information? I can understand some of this um my my grandfather was the postmaster general and uh, continued I, worked in the military as well yeah uh, he continued service um his whole life and i the, don't know how much you want me to share okay well, well this is fine but did he continue his service after the normal retirement age did he continue he did. because this is this, he did. this is the this is really the man there when, is a when, and called Pam. Just oh, okay. So there's another lady here also understands this. How much of this, Pamela, can you understand? Uh, so my father worked for the refugee uh, board uh, okay. way past his retirement. 
and he considered that a great service. Okay, right. For, so the two government thing. Lovely, two possibilities here, because I know that I've got service, and 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 I want to talk about a very humble man, and and the man who gave everything to life and gave everything to family, because part of this also is how he was looked after, how he was loved by his family. And I want to talk about a really traditional family, but this isn't the city. I want to be out of the city. Who can understand this where it's more of a rural connection? It could be a town, but it's not the big city. Yeah, he, he, he lived in the middle of nowhere and right. uh, was committed to the family, but I wouldn't describe him as humble. <laughs> so. Okay, so Tiffany, how much of that can you understand? You know that I'm having a problem with the city part too because he loved to be outdoors and he took um spinach to the farmer's market um yeah. but what, what I'm saying is what I've said is he's not a city boy this is outside of the city is where he mm -hmm. was I I would consider him in the city but that he did a lot of things outside of the city so I don't want to right. be confusing okay, so I can still be with two of you okay this mm -hmm. is so he passes in what I consider to be quite old age. And, and I feel that a lot of those that were close to him had already passed. So there's this feeling of the family looking after him, but it's like the other generations looking after him. So definitely the grandchildren would have helped as well as the children, because I feel as if he was on his own, either his partner passed before him uh, and then he feels as if he's very much on his own. He connects to John. Who understands John? Uh, I could say John is his brother. Right, so you can understand John. Can you also understand here where he would have needed looking after before he passed to the spirit world? Yes, he was in a uh, nursing home. He, he needed care of some kind. Uh, I do mm -hmm. feel that. But he also suffered loss before this time, because I feel as if those that were very close to him passed before him. Is that also right? Yes, that's correct. Because I just feel as if they were waiting for me. I feel as if they were waiting for me. And when he moved towards the passing of the spirit, it's as if he went into this, this time of peace and quietness. Do you understand that? Yeah, he had a very long, slow passing. He was okay not... because I just feel very, very peaceful with him and very, very quiet with him before he takes his transition. When he was in his working life, I know that he was extremely active. I know that he was extremely passionate about all the things that he believed in. And this is where the two of you are similar because the things that you believe in, you are also very passionate about. Would you agree with that? Yes because in a way you share his passion and there's something here to do with there is a sharing of vision. So the things that he believed in, you also have a deep, a deep sense here of belief within that. Will you accept that? Yes, he was very religious in a traditional sense. Okay, well, there is a similarity there, very much there between, yep. between the two of you. And there's something here with him because there is a sense of, it's, it's as if people just wanted him to go on forever. They just wanted him to go on forever. And he was, he was so um, surprised by this that they just wouldn't let him go and that he was happy to continue his service uh, really long after most people would consider uh, a time of retirement. And there's something here to do with him keeping contact with people even when he did retire. Yes. It's as if he still kept these strands going of, of uh, contact with people. Yeah. And as I just feel that sense of contact with people, there's something to do with your life at the moment where you need to keep contact with people. Will you remember that? Yes. There's something I got to do with you keeping contact with people and people wanting to hear from you and just this sense of bringing you strength and organization. There's reorganization around you, you see. And he was very good at organizing things and organizing and empowering people. Is that right? Uh, I don't know if I can take that. Okay, because part of his work was to do with organizing. 
Yes, he he worked for the government, and then and then this okay. refugee work. All right, but 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 there's something there within the things that he did that he helped to bring people together and to organize things. Have a little think about that because it's it's very, very clear here to me. And then also part of your life has been about organizing. Is that right? Yes. Because that's where there is also this similarity coming there between the two of you. He is, he is a joy to speak to, but he is a man who knows his own mind in life. Yes. And my goodness, would he know his own mind? Yeah. And, and as I just talk about that, all of a sudden I've got a smile and I've got this sense of laughter, you see. Yes. So I know. And, and he just said, you know, you can read all the books in the world, but you won't find your answers in the books. You will find your answers in life. Yes. yes and, th and this is really how he is in life. You know, you experience and then you find. But there's a great deal of love that comes to you. I hope you can accept that. It's yes. love, it's encouragement, it's support. And it's saying you go out there and you fulfill your dreams and your wishes. Yes, I can understand all of that. Yes, absolutely. Because it's time now for your time. And I just seem to see him. Uh, he used to just sit somewhere and look out. And, and he spent time just being towards the end of his life. Yes. And then he was very reflective. So there's stories here to do with his life. And I've got either letters of commendation where he's mentioned for his work and letters of thanks. So they existed. They definitely existed. Yes. And, and there was either awards or being very proud of what he did and also what he achieved. And his name is written somewhere. His name is written somewhere, either on like a board of fellows or something like that, where he is remembered for his work. Will you uh, have that's pretty true. He had a purple heart. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and so um, he just keeps laughing and he just yeah. keeps saying, never say never and do not limit the limitless power and potential of who you are. Yes, you I can understand that? that. Yes. And take all of his love. And, I will. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Mm. Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> it's like fully immersed in this, in, in this contact. Um, I know that I have a gentleman with me, but uh, there is a bit of a confusion. The person I want to talk to, um, how can I say? Okay, um, I know this gentleman uh, at the time in his life to which his end was in a wheelchair. And I also know that whatever he went through was affecting his lungs because I have lung problems. I also feel that there was treatment of the lungs. If, uh, it feels to me like red radiation, but, but it's, it's just something that they did. But what happened with him and, and the confusion that I have is the one that I want to talk to because there is like an overlapping. So it feels like like your partner, but, but also that there is there must be that in the world of spirits, too, because it seems to overlap here very, very strongly. So who understands a partner in the world of spirits, uh, problems with the lung? Um, it would be an assumption to say, um, no, it's actually not, that there was pneumonia, but also the whole system starts start to um, shut down. I have to say, it feels like shutting down here and affecting all of a sudden the, 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 the brain and, and moving from one state into the other. But because what makes me say that this is a, hus this is a partner of someone here, husband, is like because I know that whoever I want to speak to would stand right behind him and because he's showing me and he's not letting go of this memory he's like kissing the hand who understands that don't see a hand yet no isn't there a daughter somewhere who had a father uh, who has a father in the world of spirit who was in the wheelchair and shutting down of his, his, his body. But Susan, mom being a, a, a real part of, of this. Um, Susan has put her hand up and Pam has put her hand back up. Okay. And I'll bring up Susan first. Yes, please. Oh, actually I've got quite a few hands that have come up. 
like all of a sudden. So Susan, can you speak to me? Suzanne, can you unmute yourself, Suzanne? Suzanne. There you go. What what is the part that you you hesitated with? Suzanne, can you speak to us? Okay. Nothing happened. So we do have still probably four other hands. So I don't know if you want to give a wee bit more. And if you can't continue to take it, remove your hands. Because uh, I don't want to bring in five people. Okay. Well, I what I'm really aware of is his system started to shut down. I have to say because it feels like it starts to affect my mind, uh, and 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 somehow my blood. Because I also know that the kidneys must have shut down, because it, it seems I'm get uh, becoming blurry and I'm starting to lose the consciousness. But what is really important here, it feels very peaceful. So who understands that? So we have Pam, Lorraine, Zuluma, Rosita, and Cheryl, okay. and Suzanne, who we can't get voice for. Who understands really, and, and this needs to be right, who understands the memory standing, because he must have been in a wheelchair. He's showing me this over and over again, and he shows me that memory of you standing next to him and ki he kissing your hand in gratitude who i do suzanne porter yeah she's saying it all but she can't speak and so uh, okay do so it is a partner is that correct just need to for both of you suzanne yes or no write it in the box they're, they're, they're talking about father. Okay, father. Although Suzanne is saying I do. Uh, okay. She's saying father as well. Okay. Hmm. It's really interesting, isn't it? Okay, listen. Uh, who understands the name of John related to him? If you don't understand the name of John, please remove your hand. Ah, oh, Cheryl. Okay. So as a father, but would you understand that your mother was looking after him very, very much, Cheryl? No. Okay. Who is coming in here? No, that was Cheryl. She said no. No. Suzanne Porter said John was his best man at his wedding. And her mother was a nurse who looked after. Uh, okay, so thank you very much. That's that's really important to Be because <sighs> Suzanne, then I also you understand he was the best dad ever. He loved his family. I just want Suzanne now, please. Just, just Suzanne, say yes or no. If you can type for us in the chat box. Yes. yes. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you, everybody else. So, Suzanne, let me work with you and 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 all of the other ones. Thank you so much for for supporting me because I, I, it feels as well that he was kept at home. He needed to be with his family, and you did the last mile with him because it feels that he was he was surrounded by his people when he passed over to the world of spirit. Does that make sense, Suzanne? Must be typing. Yes. Please just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> These things do happen. Now it's fine. It's, it's, it's really fine. Because he's, I know he's so, so I feel like impatient with him because he just so loves to have the communication with his family, Suzanne. 
So they stop and go, I would not be patient enough to have that because I'm happy to be reunited. I hope that makes sense. Mm. Nothing, nothing, moment. nothing coming. Suzanne, are you understanding all of the information? I don't know if she's dropped her link. Uh, okay. Okay, I can't. Her link is dropped. Okay. Very sad. Do you want to ask him to step aside and um, develop another communicator and we'll leave this one with Suzanne? Yes, we have we have to do that. I have to say. I think the communication is broken down there. Yes, uh, unfortunately we have to do that. Isn't that funny? Um, there's no broken communication in the world of spirit, is there? <laughs> but technology. So we'll leave that with you, Suzanne, and um, many blessings. I'm not sure if you're hearing me. I think her link dropped because her picture went away. Yeah, no, that's fine. Maybe she comes back in and then she can say yes or no then. Yeah. Okay, I know that I have a mom here with me and I know this mom is, is, is related with the name Daisy or there is a memory of Daisy's. And I want to talk to her daughter here. I know that with mom, there was a very um, close connection between the two of you. So you must have... Mm. Now, mom was a very independent lady here, I have to say, because she didn't want to be a bother for you, but I know you must have looked after her or went to her on a regular basis to, to just make sure that she's okay. I seem to also realize that her mind started to go a little bit. So she, she was drifting off into the um, into forgetting a little bit. Um, so is that Cheryl and Chani, Janice that understand? Janice. Janice was the first to put up her hand, but now we've got quite a few hands that just went up. Okay. So Janice, what would you understand? Um, all of it. Daisy would be our family dog that she loved. At the end, she was losing, you know, her train of thought and who she was. I was behind her, taking care okay. of her. She was very independent, didn't want to be coddled. Okay, thank you very much, Janice. Do you understand bringing her food as well, cooking her freshly food and bring it over to her? Does that make yes. sense? Yes. That's what I want. Because she loved your cooking, though. She <laughs> loved your cooking. But also, Janice, if, if I'm really with you, you understand also um, you understand also recipes, handwritten recipes or adjustments. Yes. I have them in an old-fashioned box of handwritten recipes that okay. I use all because because she makes me aware that she had a recipe from her mother that must have been from her mother and handed down that you had and seems to be loved in the family as well does that make sense yes it does do you have any connection with austria or austrian pastry please mm -hmm. austrian pastry um the can't I can't say for sure on that one. I know we okay. eat a lot of pastries, but I don't recall. Okay, because what she's showing me, and this is for me, maybe I interpret this wrongly. It's like if you have pastry and in the pastry you have like a full apple and, and this really nice to eat. It's a bit gooey in the middle, but it's like, it's like, ooh. Yeah, that would be, yeah, they loved apple pies and like apple uh, tarts, those type of things. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like just where you have a half a size of an apple in it and then you have the pastry around it and it's just lovely and I want to have custard on it. It's like the, the full fledged, does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Oh, thank you so much. I'm getting hungry <laughs> here. It's like, oh my good. And you know what? It was a bit of a downfall because she was a very sweet tooth as well and she shouldn't have eaten... Um, she shouldn't have eaten sweets at all. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, that does. Every night with her cup of tea. 
Thank you very much because it affected her body and I feel that her bones were affected as well. I know she must have had arthritis or rheumatism. I have to say it was really, uh, my, my hands are starting to be a bit difficult. Does that make sense please too? Arthritis, yes. Okay. Um, all of a sudden she makes me aware of these headaches. So she also must have suffered from, from uh, headaches because uh, towards, her, uh, towards the time of her passing, would that make sense that you had to soften the light to, 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 to put, uh, get the uh, blinds down, down because her eyes were affected? Does that make sense, please? Is yes, that... it does. Okay. I seem to know that uh, it's getting very heavy with breathing with her, I, I have to say, and it, it's so, oh, so beautiful. Do you know, did you look into... Uh, how is it palliative care for her? Yes. Uh, because it, it feels to me also that when when the time was 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 coming to that l l end, do you also stayed with her? Did you sleep next to her? Uh, yes, I also worked in the hospital when she was in there with her. Because it feels so home. Because I know that you must have been there when, 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 when she starts to pass into the other, had that shift into the other world. Does that make sense, please? Yes, we brought her home. Awesome, awesome. You're a, Janice. You're a sweet tooth as well, aren't you? <laughs> it's funny. I was just looking up Panucci fudge recipes because that was their oh. favorite growing up to make today. <laughs> Don't tell me because it's like it's like going through the memories and, and creating something really nice, and you know that is is actually. Uh, you should pace yourself but it's like well what does what well it's a bit funny because it's like uh what harm does one time but if one time becomes almost every time which is the dif difficulty does that make sense to pay to hold back yes so, it does. so in ways are like a bit of a chokey that she brings an upliftment in your life and, and just a bit of a sweetness in your life so your life must be very, very tough at the moment. So you must work a lot and, and you have uh, carry a lot of it on your shoulders. Does that make sense? Uh, absolutely. Yes. And, 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 you know, you make it look so easy that nobody actually recognize how much you actually hold on your shoulders. Does that make sense, please, too? And, 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 and she here is, is really all about supporting and this nurturing mom, because I know you would have seeked her, uh, not just advice, but her presence to be in, because it's like your haven of safety. Does that make sense? 100%, yes. There she brings the haven of, of the tradition, of the memories of you together in her sitting room, having this togetherness and and, remembering you to have that moment of quiet calmness and just to be together um she is lovely wonderful uh um just before i finish was she particular about her nails as well <laughs> yes she was very particular about her parents yes because i'd like to have them i'd like i'd like to have them properly done even though when i laid on my on my bed before I passed. Would you understand having done her her nails, please? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. So take all her love and look after your nails a bit better. I just was looking at them and go, they've chipped again. I gotta fix them, I guess. <laughs> in love, honestly in love. There is so much love for you there. So just know that there is at least one person who loves you to the moon and back. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. It means Thank a lot. Thank you so much for working with me. Thank you, everybody else, for helping me out. Thank you. I'm going to be a bit cheeky on behalf of Suzanne, who came back, who wants to know if there's a message from her father. <laughs> she typed it in the chat box. So I don't want to leave her hanging that way. She did okay. ask message, message from her dad. It brings me back this memory of kissing his hand because there is a lot of gratitude here. And I know that uh, that whatever is going on, there is not much, um, um, how can I say? There's not much that people realize how much you do, but also um, do good and speak about it. So, so Suzanne, you seem not to speak about what you actually do in life. 
because because where you was brought up it was just natural to do things but also what i feel very much is the gratitude of that and how he was able to to also say that so so just know that whatever is going on in your life um maybe you need to say something at times and i hope this is right because i'm going blind here which is which is great um and and, and just to be yes I have to say is his gratitude and and the gratitude that it, you deserve and and it seems that you not always get from from the people concerned does she understand that thank you david yes oh. thank you very much wonderful uh, so that will be bringing us to the end of our service. We're so grateful you all joined us and enjoy this uh, blessedly beautiful day, everyone. Um, we would ask for one of our guests to close with prayer, and then we go into a closing piece of music. And as always, we are truly in love with seeing uh, Colin and David. And thank you for taking the time to be with us in community. Always an absolute joy. Always an absolute joy as we just celebrate this time of peace and harmony. We give thanks to the spirit world for their presence, their love, but also for the renewal, the renewal of knowledge that love like life is indeed eternal. And as the great presence of God manifests within all of our hearts, may that blessing travel forth to touch all within our world, the leaders of all nations, all those who are going through times of great difficulty, May they know that they are loved. May they be strengthened. May thy presence surround each and every one of us now and always. And may all of our love travel forth upon the wings of prayer, wherever it is needed, for thy love is everywhere. Amen. Amen. We love you very, very much. We love, love you, you my too. darling. We see you soon. Maybe you need to have some hot apple pie with some ice cream on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Evo. Evo. It's a holiday. It is. But not on my hip, though. Oh. Well, the rest of us can have hot apple pie. <laughs> yes, you go for it. We love you. And we see enjoy. you all soon. Bye bye. Holidays, everybody. Bye. Bye. Love you.